Don't just live for tomorrow Or just live for yesterday Just be glad for all you have that's in today And though you've come through many obstacles Hey everyone, Connie here, and welcome to my blind reaction to episode one of My Little Pony Make Your Mark. So, this is the first episode of Generation 5. We've had a movie, we had a special, and this is the first actual full episode of the series. Uh, now, apparently there's going to be, like I guess, 23 episodes in total as of current. That's what's been ordered. Um, but there's only eight episodes that were released so far. Um, so I don't know how the batches are going to work with this. I don't know how often they're going to release. I know that uh, there is also a holiday special coming at, uh, near the end of November. So there's that. But I don't know when the actual next, uh, you know, episodes will be coming. Basically when episode nine comes. Um... But we'll handle that as it comes, and we'll tackle that as it goes. Um, this is probably one of those shows that, just like now... So sorry for keeping messing with my hair. It's autism. <laughs> That's the only thing I can explain for why that bothers me so much. Um, like we're doing now, uh, whenever new episodes release, we'll probably just like throw it in there. Throw, throw that into the schedule um and just kind of get to it right away because it's it's something that's that i'm not going to want to hold off on because for those of you who have been following me uh for a long time who were on the previous channel and everything or channels even back before 2018 basically um you know that i started with mlp that My Little Pony was kind of my kickoff into all of these other shows. All of these other shows that I decided to check out were because of MLP. And I've talked about it many times before, but not even just because of MLP saving my life. Like, literally saving me from depression and suicide. But it's also just because it expanded my interests in animation with how much mlp came to mean to me very quickly i started to wonder and think about okay what other animation can i get into so i started to check out other things things like steven universe star versus the force of evil and plenty of other shows here and there and it just it snowballed because prior to that like there were things i was very much interested in um but animation there were certain animated shows that i was into and i was into anime even back at that point but not as much as to where i'm at now it, it definitely allowed me to kind of further my scope in that regard and I deeply appreciate it for such. Because obviously many shows nowadays I probably would have never gotten into if that hadn't... Ha well, if I hadn't discovered MLB in the first place, I wouldn't be here. So, to be fair... Excuse me, I don't know what the awning's about, but... Yeah... So MLP was kind of the start of everything for me with, with doing YouTube and with these reactions and everything. And so I want to kind of explore that further as we go into this next generation. So, so it's obvious I was always going to react to this. And so what are my thoughts going in? Well, we had the movie, first off, uh, A New Generation. And it was great. Like it continued off of the um, it continued off of the last generation of, of friendship is magic, um, giving us a story set some unknown amount of time in the future, but likely hundreds of years, possibly even thousands. 
considering uh, the time of Twilight and everything, is referred to as ancient Equestria. And we have a lot of big, massive changes having been made to the world. One of the big ones being that everything is kind of reverted again into a state of the different pony races not liking each other and all other races that had been integrated into Equestria having left. Dragons, changelings, so on and so forth. And while we don't entirely know how that happened, um, we do know that this is kind of a thing that happens in real life. Throughout human history, society has changed a lot and it's gone back and forth on many different things. Societies that were friendly with each other would turn to war against each other and then eventually at some point might become friendly again, but then also turn back to war again at some point after that. It, it happens. Time changes things, different leaders change things, and so it, it's realistic to depict the idea that hundreds or even thousands of years in Equestria's future, they're not friends anymore. And people have questioned a lot of things with that, though, like where are the Wendigos and all, and it's like, that's a, that's a fair question, and maybe that'll get answered at some point. The thing is, I feel like a lot of people wanted all the answers right off the bat. And because the movie didn't answer everything, some people were not quite sold on it. And the thing is, I don't think it would have been good if they answered everything at once. I feel that would have been a very bad decision from a writing standpoint. And, and it would leave nothing for the future. So... I'm glad that they didn't answer everything right away. And apparently the comics have answered a couple things um, as well. Um, I haven't read the comics, um, so I don't know. But they might... I, I, know, I know Discord appears in the comics. I, so I know the G5 ponies meet Discord. And... I don't know, like, every detail about what happens. I just know that's part of it. And again, I know they find out some things. But either way, the comics might answer some things and the series might answer others. I'm sure we'll get all the answers we're looking for eventually, or at least the ones we need to know. Um, either way... So we had the movie, and then we had a special, the Make Your Mark special, which was basically the lead, more even more of a lead into the series. The Make Your Mark special centers especially around Zip, finding her her path, her thing to do, living in Maritime Bay now, and she ends up becoming a investigator. Um, but we also see some various other things throughout the special on what the other ponies are doing. Like Pip has opened a salon. Um, we see what Izzy and Hitch and all are doing, Sunny. And we even get to see how they interact with other ponies around Maritime Bay, including the likes of Posey. It also introduces us a new facet to Earth Pony magic by giving the Earth Ponies the ability of... Um, excuse me? <laughs> so Someone honked out there and it's like, wh what? <laughs> um, but gives them the ability of, uh, oh god, why is my mind blanking? Geomancy, that's it. My mind was blanking on the term. But it allows them to control plant life and whatnot uh, it, it, on the earth. And it's like, that's a natural extension of the earth ponies already existing magic because it's like they were they were kind of playing up the idea that earth ponies don't have magic and it's like maybe not in the same way as pegasi and unicorns do but the earth ponies have always had magic it's just been a different kind of magic it's been an increased uh form of you know cultivation 
and handling the land and, and planting and whatnot. Only earth ponies had the strongest ability to be able to do that. Unicorns and Pegasi just couldn't in the same way. Um, and again, while it's not the same kind of magic as, say, the magic of flight or, you know, literal magic from a horn, it was still magic. And it was made a very huge point of that that was an aspect of Earth Ponies in G4, which this is a direct follow-up to. So, we see, though, that here they get a new form of magic that's a lot more unique and interesting, and I'm wondering where they're going to take that in the future. Um, we also got to look at our villain, uh, whose name has been revealed to be Opaline. And yes, I, it's been everywhere, so it's, it's kind of been impossible to not be spoiled on that. Um, Opaline, I don't know anything else about her, I just know her name. But apparently from what we saw in the last part, she is an alicorn, which is really interesting and raises a lot of questions. Um, so I'm curious to find out more about her. We also know she has an assistant named Misty, who is shown kind of off to the side. It, it's, it's almost hard to notice her in the, um, in the Make Your Mark special. But she has a really cute design. Um, a lot of people have really flocked to her design uh, since it was more clearly revealed and everything. And so people are excited for her. We also have um, a dragon who has been uh, who who has been hatched from an egg by Hitch. So Hitch has a baby, and I've seen some cute fan arts of. Uh, Hitch and Pip kind of parenting the baby dragon, and that's cute. Also because I ship them. <laughs> but yeah, it's like, there's some interesting setup for this series so far. Um, I hope that at least eventually we start to explore more of Equestria, because we only know a few places. We only know, at this point, in the current day, Maritime Bay, Zephyr Heights, uh, Bridalwood, I think it's called. Yeah, Bridalwood. Uh, and that's really it. Like, we don't know any other, like, current locations in Equestria at the moment. So I hope we get to explore more of that through this. Um, I know that Sprout is going to be returning. I, I don't know who's going to be voicing him now, because I, because obviously, money reasons, they can't get Ken Jeong back. But I'm hoping he at least has an interesting character arc in this because he's got he's gonna have a lot to apologize for obviously um and i was watching the bronies react there was a new bronies react to make your mark and i'll just say right off the bat that people were very touchy in that on the animation of the special and i think that's going to be carrying over to this series because it's obvious there's less of a budget than there was with the movie i mean that's kind of the reason they can't have all the celebrity vas in it anymore um but i i i'm i'm acknowledging that and expecting that to be fair I'm not going to hold that against the series. I'm focusing more on the story, the characters, that kind of stuff. Um, that's that's what's important to me here. Um, so as long as that's good, I can deal with some choppy animation. Another thing that they uh, brought up, though, in the Bronies React was Izzy's voice. A lot of them did not like Izzy's uh, new voice actress, uh, Anasani. Uh, and... and noted that the performance was very different and yeah the performance is definitely different but people were acting as if it were, were a bad performance and i think that's really unfair and just kind of rude towards anasani um 
And I'm not just saying that because I met her at TrotCon and everything earlier this year, back in uh, the summer. But it's just rude. <laughs> she's doing a good job, and she's doing her best to bring Izzy to life just as much as her previous VA did for the movie. And I think she's doing a good job. Sure, she might not have the exact same inflection and, and everything that uh, the other one did. I can't remember her name right now. It's just, it's, it's escaping me. I'm sorry. But I think Anasani's doing a great job. Um, and no one, no one has any issue with any of the other VAs. It's specifically Izzy's they were targeting. Um... And, and while I admit Anasani isn't my favorite of the new VAs to take over the roles after the movie, honestly, my favorite is Pip's new VA because she nails everything. Um, just even re-watching Make Your Mark again and when uh, Pip is, like, doing her little song thing and, and, like, you know, improvising the lyrics, just saying something, something, something over and over while just going over the, the sound of the, what she wants for the song. It's like, it's just, it's such a good vocal performance. Even though all she's doing is saying something over and over. She's saying it the way she's saying it in. The inflections and tones and everything. That's what helps it shine. Um, but yeah, so I, I don't know what to expect going into this exactly. I have a lot of hopes. And I don't remember too much from the trailer. But I do remember one very specific thing specifically at the very end of the trailer the the little tease at the end of the trailer for those of you who saw it you know exactly what i'm talking about i'm wondering when is that going to come in considering that was a trailer for presumably this batch of episodes i assume it has to come in by episode eight but they might wait until episode eight to actually have that come into play i don't know Either way, uh, I'm very excited. Obviously, we've been talking for a bunch of time on this to just, you know, prep ourselves for the fact that we are here. We are finally here at the first episode of a new generation of My Little Pony. My Little Pony, Make Your Mark, Generation 5. It's exciting. It's very exciting. And so, let's get this going. When the screen fades to black, pause this redirect and go to the description below. Follow the link to the reaction, and after you watch it, come back here to the redirect and resume play. Because after it fades to black and then it fades back in, everything from that point forward will be my afterthoughts and will contain spoilers to the episode. So, that being said, thank you so much for tuning in, and I will see you at the reaction. And we are back, and we'll begin with spoilers in 3, 2, 1, now. So... I cried when Friendship is Magic ended. I cried pretty damn hard, if you remember. Um, I, I, I was emotional because it was the end of a generation of something, again, that literally saved my life and that had become so meaningful to me in so many ways. And... When G5 was first announced and when the movie was first coming out, I was excited. I was excited as hell to be able to go back. And I was excited that it was so soon. Like, it happened so quickly after the end of G4. Remember, G4 only ended in 2019. So it's like, we got to G5 pretty damn quickly. Um, and... I was, I was hyped. I was excited. I was ready. And again, I love the movie. And I, I love the special. A lot of people weren't as keen on the special. I still loved it. Maybe not as much as the movie, but I did. And so, uh, again, I was going into this very excited. And as you saw, I was starting to tear up. Just at the fact that we were here. Just as, at, at the fact that we were having... A new series that we had a opening to a new generation of My Little Pony and like I also mentioned this My Little Pony started this journey for me 
where I've been at with stuff like Amphibia, Owl House, everything I do on this channel is because of this series, this franchise. And so getting to share with you all a new generation of this, it means a lot. It's important to me that we can do this again. And that's why I didn't want to wait. That's why this is coming right away this week. Um, why I put it as a second slot for Thursday. Because I knew how important this was going to be for me. I knew how big of a deal this was. And yeah, I can record it and everything ahead of time and bring it in sometime in the future, but I didn't want to wait to share it all with you either. Because that's that's the big deal here. That I get to share this with you. That I get to experience this next generation of MLP with, with you. Because... It's been one of the best experiences of my life getting to be a part of this fandom. And even even though the, the Brony fandom has a lot of negative shit associated with it nowadays, even though there's been a lot of bad people who have come out of this fandom, there is still so much good to it. There is still so much positivity I've had some amazing experiences through the conventions I've gone to, the meetups, the friends I've made that I'm still friends with to this day in a lot of cases. I'm going to a meetup this, this coming weekend specifically because of this, this premiere, this new series. We're going to watch this same episode. We're going to enjoy each other's company, play games, have fun. And it's going to be a blast. Even if it's only a few of us, it's going to be a blast because it's, it's about the friendship and the, and the camaraderie and hanging out. And this episode expressed that same feeling. It was a, it was a good starting episode too giving us glimpses into the bad guys, but also showcasing just our main five being friends, being there for each other, helping each other out. Uh, and let's, let's talk about the bad guys first. Let's get that out of the way. So we have Opaline, an Alicorn um, dissident, I guess you could call her. Um, living somewhere in Equestria. She is unhappy with the way things have gone in terms of friendship coming back and everything, and she wants power. We don't know all the reasons, all the motivations, but she wants power. Maybe even to control Equestria as its leader under her hoof. Now, we also find out that Misty was apparently, in a way you could say, adopted by her. She rescued Misty when she was a filly. And we don't get any more information on it than that, but that actually answers a lot of questions. Why is Misty, who seems kind of nice, serving under Opaline? Well, it's because she's she kind of owes it all to her. It, it kind of gives me vibes in a weird way of Rapunzel and Mother Gothel from Tangled. Um... The movie, specifically, I haven't seen the series. But Rapunzel is uh, initially so attached to Mother Gothel, even though Mother Gothel's very clearly kind of a bitch. Um, because it's all she's ever known. Gothel kidnapped her when she was a baby and raised her. So in her eyes, Mother knows best. And she didn't realize how wrong that was until she got to see the outside world. Until she got to experience that she could have more. 
And I very much feel that that is exactly what's going to happen with Misty. In fact, I think that through going undercover and everything as she's clearly going to do with our main five, I think Misty is going to eventually turn and betray Opaline and side with our heroes instead and possibly even become a major character. Like, I don't think she's going to, like, join them so completely that it'll become a new main six. Um, I think she's going to be more, like, on the level of Starlight or the CMC. A major character, but still not quite on the same level of main character status as the main six. Or, in this case, main five. Um, I think it's going to be like that. Um, that's my prediction as of now. Um, so let's talk about the rest of this. So the episode mostly focuses around our friends kind of just hanging out in different groups and kind of trying to figure some things out. It's Sunny's birthday, so Izzy decides to make her a gift. Because, of course, I mean, that makes sense. Izzy is a crafter, it's what she does, and so she wants to obviously make something for her friend. That's just logical. <laughs> so she makes, this, uh, she makes this gift that's initially supposed to be a bracelet, but um, Sunny ends up wearing it as a hair accessory instead, a main accessory, and it actually works out even better that way. So... Izzy starts getting all these requests to make more, but she's having some creative block. She doesn't know how to make something like that, but make it unique and different enough to appeal to the person requesting it. She tries a couple things, and it doesn't work out, so she eventually, through talking to Sunny and Pip and everyone, decides that she needs to try to go back to her roots. So she starts to head towards Bridalwood. On the way, she ends up accidentally running into a broken down moped, which it's like, okay, I, maybe not exactly a moped, but the same kind of idea. Um, and it's like, okay, that's interesting for the lore of this generation. Because we know this takes place a long, 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 long time after Generation 4, after Friendship is Magic. So at some point between the generations, or they, they might even still exist in the current day, but there were motorized vehicles. Because in Generation 4, we never saw anything like that. Like, like Pinky had a, a, a cart that she could uh, carry around with her, um, which we didn't see often or anything, but... And, and we saw, like, horse-drawn carriages and stuff like that, but there was no motorized vehicles because it just wasn't that kind of world. But in the world like Make Your Mark, we know already from, like, seeing Zephyr Heights and everything that there is more advanced technology. So seeing a motorized vehicle is not out of the question. And it's not anything, like, super high-tech or fancy, but it's also something that was very old and that Izzy restored. So to be fair, it wouldn't be something super fancy. Um, it was old enough to be just sitting there rusted and broken down. So it's probably not like even more, more like completely modern tech. I don't know how old it is, but still, that's really interesting bit of uh, world building, you could say. But yeah, Izzy restores it and makes it into her new crafting uh, cart, which she's going to utilize, presumably, as the series goes on. So that's Izzy's part of the story. Pip, meanwhile, is trying to make a new song. She's uh, trying to keep it within line with her style and her sound, but also make it unique and different enough to stand out, which is, yeah, I feel what a lot of musicians probably struggle with. Uh, some musicians, some bands and everything obviously reinvent their sound every now and again. Um, but a lot of them, at times, want to retain what makes them popular, honestly. And Pip is trying to do that here. She's trying to retain what her audience loves about her currently, 
but also wants to mix things up a little to make it fresh. And that's completely fair. Uh, the only problem is she's having a bit of creative block herself, which she doesn't even realize at first. So she ends up getting help from Izzy because Izzy ends up crafting her uh, a little sound thing, amplifier thing. Um, I, I don't know how, what you would call it. It's not really a a disc it's not really a, a dj's table or anything like that but either way utilizing it along with the song on her phone allows it to remix the song somehow i guess um and that's the kind of idea that it goes for that she needs to maybe try starting to do remixes of her songs it's a way to keep that same style but freshen things up Remixes are pretty cool. I've heard a lot of great remixes for songs uh, throughout the years. So it's it's actually a really great idea. Um, and it does exactly what it is advertised. Sunny is here mostly as a character to work off of. She helps the others along uh, throughout the episode. She doesn't do too much. Like She's not actually like looking for much. And the same could kind of be said about Zip. She's helping uh, Hitch and, every, and, and, and I guess Izzy to a degree, putting everything away and all. Um, and, and she's keeping notes and everything, but she's not, you know, she's not looking for anything herself currently. She's just helping out where needed, even if she is getting a little annoyed by having to repeat the process a couple times thanks to Sparky and Izzy and everything. Um, Hitch is mostly just trying to get things cleaned up and put away while also being a parent to uh, Sparky, which is still, like, really fucking cute. Like, some of the reactors in the Bronies React were talking about, like, saying that Hitch was a little off, a little different than he was portrayed in the movie. And I can see that. Like, he, he's definitely slightly different in the way he's been portrayed than he was originally in the New Generation movie. But I don't mind it. I don't think it's a bad change or anything. Um, it's just it's just different. Um, and, and it's cute. Seeing him, like, being a father to, to Sparky is adorable, honestly. Um, I, I like the idea of giving him the kind of parent role to this baby dragon. I, I think it's a smart idea for his character. Plus, with his now ability to speak to animals, as well as the new Earth Pony magic and everything, it's going to lead to some interesting moments for sure. Sparky, as we see, is also very rambunctious, very, honestly, childlike. Um, he acts like a, like a child, like a baby, a toddler would. Getting into mischief, uh, messing things up, uh, making messes. <laughs> It's like, yeah, that's exactly what you would expect from this character. Um, but he doesn't show, like, too much intelligence, which was something I was worried about. Because there's so many shows out there and everything where the baby character is shown to have, like, an unusual amount of intelligence. And even Friendship is Magic did that to a degree with the baby cakes. They, they were a little too smart. And I've never been a fan of that trope where baby characters are shown being, like, way too smart for their age it just it, it takes me out of the immersion so seeing that sparky is acting like a baby acting like maybe not a newborn necessarily but still acting like a baby a, a toddler at least i i can put those fears to rest for now um and it's it's clear that sparky has some level of understanding but to a baby degree still to to a very young degree where it's like there's a certain level of understanding but not to a degree where it's unbelievable so I, i'm good i'm good with how sparky is being portrayed um we see also that apparently the uh the crystal bright house is being it, it, it's like shielding with magic the o Opaline's ability to spy on them. So that's interesting as well. There's there's a lot of questions that 
I'm, I'm definitely interested to see answered, and I think it's a really strong start. The animation looks much better than it did in the uh, special, too. Like, I, w I was worried about that. A lot of people were worried about that, but it actually, it's an improvement, and the lighting especially is really damn good. Um, I, I definitely think it's improved. Maybe they even heard... Maybe they even heard the feedback to the special and put a little extra into the animation and the lighting because of that. I don't know. I, I mean, I guess we'll see how it pans out when the rest of the episodes come in and everything. And if they're only working on, like, batches of them at a time, like, we only have eight episodes here at, at first, maybe that's why. Maybe they're focusing on these eight episodes, making them look as good as possible, and then they'll focus more on getting the next set done. And so on and so forth. Um, but yeah, I'm I'm actually a lot more excited than I was before after seeing this first episode. The opening is really good. the The characters are great. The voice acting, the art and animation, everything is just really good. Um, I, I'm I'm into it. I, I I'm fully on board. Um, so yeah. I, I'm excited, and I hope you are too. Uh, we will be watching more of this as the uh, weeks go on, and so I would love to, in this at this point, hear your thoughts. Tell me in the comments below what did you think of this first episode of My Little Pony: Make Your Mark. And thank you so much for tuning in. For now, I'm Connie, and I'm signing off. See y'all next time.